Well, good afternoon, everyone. So just to make things clear today, we're going to have a lecture here on YouTube. And after that, you will have the option to work on your presentations. Those of you who have your presentation ready will also have the option to do it on Skype with me today. So if you already have your PowerPoint or whatever you have ready, you can share screens with me on the video conference and then we can have your presentation already today so you don't have to worry about the 23rd, the 30th, or any of the other, or this coming Friday or anything like that. You can just already do it today. That's an option. If you're not ready yet, you can work on your presentation you can ask me questions if you need something. I'll leave a channel open for communication so that you can reach out to me. I'll leave Skype open. We have also our group chat where everybody has access to me. So I'll be for the full hour and a half here for you. Because I, I feel like, um, I think it's perfectly okay for you to get assignments or get a video for you to work on. But I myself, as a teacher, I prefer to teach online and be here the entire time and be more accessible like that. I, I prefer to do things this way. So I'm going to do the lecture for now, which will cover the first part of our class. And the second part of our class those of you who finished your presentation PowerPoints or whatever you prepared for your presentation, you can get on Skype with me and do your presentation for me. Those of you who decided to do your presentation for the class, who are already scheduled for Friday, you can do it on Friday. Those who are scheduled for the following Friday, and so on. Don't have to worry too much about that. Today we're going to read a text called Wrong Channel. Wrong Channel. What is that all about? When you think of channels, what do you think of? Just type it in. Just type in any word that comes to mind when you think of that comes to mind when you think of channels. I'm old school, so in my head you say channel, I think TV. I still think TV. Some people think YouTube. Others think, well, I'm not even going to discard the possibility that some people might actually think channel as in to channel your emotions, to focus on something very possible that somebody's going to think about that. Well, in this entire chapter we've been talking about cultural values. Culture. What is culture? What does culture mean to you? All of that. And this text we're going to read has something to do with that as well. Wrong Channel was written by somebody called Roberto Fernandez. It's a Spanish speaking name, so I thought it would be nice to pronounce it properly. I, um, I also want you to know that I prepared a Quizlet study set for you. And um, some of you are doing the Quizlet study sets without logging in. I need you to log in so that I can see your progress. Quizlet grades and your progress, for example, if you get a 65% or a zero, whatever you get on Quizlet, I'm not going to use that grade towards your grade. I'm not going to do that. It's, it's illegal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to check and see who's doing it, who's participating, and then you get a grade not for what you did, 
but for participating, for, for, for doing your work. So people who consistently do the work will get a higher grade, not people who get a higher score. It is just based on participation because you have lots of different grades here. You have a written grade, you have a listening, a, lis a grade for listening skills as well. And we are due very soon to do another one of those listening tests. I know some of you complain, oh no, I got a headache. I understand. I'm not going to do the full on 45 minute listening test. We'll do a part of it, but it's very important. In your future, if you need to go to university, if you want to further your studies, you need to take an examining proficiency, and that includes a listening test, just like the ones I give you. So you have a listening grade, you have a participation grade, you're going to have a grade for your speaking skills, which I test constantly when you speak in class. If I speak to you in English and you respond in Norwegian, that's just half of it. Because if you respond in Norwegian, then I know you can understand me, but I don't know if you can speak. So you have to respond in English for me to be able to give you a grade. And on top of that, for your speaking skills, you get a grade for your presentation. You get a written grade for your essays, for your written work, and you get vocabulary test. So you have a variety of things you're tested on. A variety of things. And your discipline, your participation, you, the way that you act in class, all of that counts as well. Let's get started. Wrong channel, page 168. Let me show you. Let me get rid of the special effects so you can see the page. Wrong channel, page 168, we're going to listen and read. I know that people are like, not everybody, but some of you are like, oh, I don't know, I don't. it's only two minutes. You can concentrate, look at the words, and listen to the words. It's extremely important. I can't tell you this enough. It helps with spelling. How does it help with spelling? We're listening. Because you're listening to the word and you're looking at the word. So it will register and you will get used to seeing the word, hearing the word, until you learn how to spell it. Very, very important. So please open your books to page 168, wrong channel. That's what we're listening to now. Wrong Channel by Roberto G. Fernandez. Barbarita waited impatiently for her ride as beads of sweat dripped from her eyebrows into her third cup of cold, syrupy espresso. She was headed for the toilet when she heard the knocking sounds of Mima's old Impala. About time you got here, yelled Barbarita from the Florida room. It wouldn't start this morning. Barbarita got in, tilted the rearview mirror, and applied enough rouge to her face for a healthier look. She wanted to make a good impression on the doctor who would approve her medical records for her green card. On the way to Jackson Memorial, Mima talked about her grandchildren. Barbarita knocked down all the Bibles and Reader's Digests on the table when the nurse finally called her name. Sorry, ma'am, but you can't come in, the nurse said to Mima. I'm her interpreter, replied the polyglot. No bueno said the doctor grimly as he walked in with Barbarita's x-rays. He told Mima, ask her if she had TB. Mima turned to Barbarita. He says if you have a television. Tell him yes, but in Havana, not in Miami, 
But my daughter has a television here. Mima told the doctor. She says she had TB in Cuba, not in Miami. But her daughter has TB here. In that case, we need to test her daughter for TB too. Mima translated. He says he needs to test your daughter's television to make sure it works. Otherwise, you cannot get your green card. Why the television? Asked a puzzled Barbarita. How many times did I tell you you needed to buy one? Don't you know, Barbarita? This is America. Okay, so here's the situation. Those of you who studied Spanish before, you will probably get this straight away. The V's in Spanish and the B's, B's and V's are pronounced the same. So the only way for you to know what a word is, is contextualizing it. The word context, summon, hang, to contextualize, to put something in a context. So it depends on the context for you to know if the word starts with a V or a B. For instance, here they were talking about a disease. Can you type in the chat which disease they talked about? It's an illness. And those of you who are going to be nurses, paramedics, doctors, all of you who are going to work in this field, you need to know. They talk about a disease. Type it in. Those of you who typed in tuberculosis, tuberculosis is, is a disease and it's referred to as in TB. You know how people short everything? So tuberculosis, tuberculosis is referred to as TB. And here you have two ladies who are Spanish speaking. So when they heard TB, they didn't know what TB was. Maybe if the doctor had said tuberculosis, they would have known. But they didn't because he only said TB. So in their mind, they thought he was saying TV because it's the same in Spanish. TB, TV. So they completely misunderstood it. It's very important that you don't misunderstand things. Of course, they could have contextualized it and think, of course, it can't be TV. What does watching TV have to do with me being here in the hospital? Here's what we're going to do. If you have your books in your hands, open your book to page 169. It's right there, the next page. Let me show you. Right, so you see the pages you have there? It's over here. We're going to do the interpretation right now. You don't need to do this as a written exercise at home because you're going to be using the second part of this lecture to prepare a presentation or to do your presentation for me on Skype. Let me start with the first one. This is a very common activity. True or false? If something is true, you just type in chat that it's true. And remember, even if 
a whole bunch of people have typed on top of you in the chat, it doesn't matter because I'm looking at who's participating, who is in there. Because if, if you don't type it in, I don't know that you're in there. All right. Barbarita hears Mima's car before she sees her. True or false? True or false? The answer to this is in the very first paragraph. The paragraph that starts, Bar Barbarita waited impatiently for her ride as beads of sweat dripped from her eyebrows into her third cup of cold syrupy ex espresso. She was headed for the toilet when she heard the knocking sounds of Mima's old Impala. The answer is right there. True or false, that first one. Barbarita hears Mima's car before she sees her. It is true. An Impala is a car. Those of you who are passionate about cars, you might have known this straight away. Those of you who didn't know it was a car, it might have been kind of hard to, to get this one. Letter B. Mima is late because she had problems with her car. True or false? Type it in. Remember, your words count. Your presence here counts. I'll look at the chat and see your words in there, and that counts. And I know that you participated, and I know that you're following what I'm saying. Because let us just say that I just send you a video, and I say, hey, take notes and, and do the exercises. I don't know if you watched it. I don't know if you were paying attention to everything that was said. But here, because this is live, and I'm in the chat box interacting with you, reading your answers, and in real time, I ask a question, you type it in, then I know that you're here, and that is extremely important. Letter B, Mima is late because she had problems with her car. It is true when she says, it wouldn't start this morning. It's right, right below the first paragraph. It refers to the car. Letter C. They're going to the doctors to have Mima's medical records approved. True or false? I'm just giving you time for you to go and scroll through the text, scan it, look for the information. Letter C is true. They're trying to get her records approved for her green card. What's a green card? Please type it in. What's a green card? I know that um the <laughs> I <laughs> I know the translation for it is on the book. There is a glossary right there, but that's not what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you. I'm asking you to explain it to me in English. What is a green card? What kind of document is it? And what can you do with this document? How do you say that? For a four up holds to latilsa, silica dukan yobe. 
How do you say that? In English, of course. I just said Norwegian just to give you an idea of what I'm looking for, but I want you to explain it in English. It is a document that gives you tillatelse, permission to work and live in a country legally. And there are lots of types of um, permissions for you to live somewhere. I have lived in different countries with different types of visas. A visa is a temporary permission. I had a visa for the U USA as a tourist. I, I've had one, a family reunion visa because my family lived there with me. So I had my passport together with my mom's passport, my dad's passport. That's a visa. It's permission for you to live somewhere temporarily. And I've had a student visa. I studied in the USA as a teenager, my junior and senior year. What I did is I got a, a student visa. A visa is different from a green card because a visa is temporary, a green card is for life. Here in Norway, I have I have one, a green card, and it's not even green. It's not even green, and it's um, it's a card with my picture in it, with permission from the government for me to live here. I came here first on a family reunion visa, and after that, I got a permanent resident card, which is a green card. So now, unless I do something really stupid, I can live here for the rest of my life and I have all the same rights as any Norwegian would have with this green card. It's not green though. It is a card, but it isn't green. Permission to live somewhere legally. The difference between a visa and a green card, a visa is temporary, green card is permanent. So this lady is trying to get her green card approved. Where is she from? Where is she from? Where is Barbarita from? Barbarita. Barbarita. If I just try to pronounce it with a, an American accent. It is the funniest thing. Whenever I'm in the United States, people say I have an accent, like a foreign accent. And every time I'm everywhere else, people wonder if I'm American. Go figure. Barbarita is from Cuba. She also, in the text, they mention one city in Cuba, the capital of Cuba, Huvestad, the capital. What is it called? Habana. That is correct. In the very last one, letter E, true or false, Barbarita used to live in Cuba. That is true because that's where she's from. Let's take a look at the second activity on the same page. Let me get rid of this so you can see the page. Right over here where it says reflect. Reflect. Let's talk about that for a bit. Okay, where it says reflect, there are two questions. The first one, what goes wrong in the communication? Please write this down. And this is something that I explained to you in the very beginning. 
when I was talking about pronunciation in Spanish. Those of you who took Spanish in, in junior high, you will probably know. You will most likely see all the answers in the chat box right now that I'm typing to you right now whether your answers are right or wrong please write a sentence a short sentence explaining what was wrong with the way they communicated what went wrong what was the information that got lost in translation there was a piece of information that got lost in translation and it had something to do with the pronunciation of a word. What was the word? Please type it in. And I'll be telling you if it's right or wrong in the chat. If you look at the chat, you will see me typing in there. All of those students who were paying attention at the beginning when I was explaining all of this, all of you will know, all of you will know what I explained to you about the Spanish pronunciation, what I explained to you about the letter V and the letter B being pronounced the same way in Spanish. Here's what com what's coming next. But before we get to that, I'm going to ask you the last question of the day until we do one round of Quizlet Live and then I'll be available on Skype for the presentation. Those of you who need to do your presentation, hit me up on Skype. I'm going to put the link in the chat. So I'll be on Skype for everybody and I'll be available the full hour and a half. Because I, I I don't know, I think there is a misunderstanding going around that people might think, oh, it's so easy to teach from home. All you do, you just you don't have to teach as much. First of all, I have to prepare this before I come on live to talk to you and teach you. Then afterwards I stay available to you online and I have to correct your work. I have to sit there sometimes and I, I do video conferences. So the only thing that it saves me from is the trip. Because it is a trip, I'll tell you. All the way to Selbo and back. It is a trip. So the last question of the day, who is, we're talking about misunderstanding. Who is responsible for the misunderstanding in your opinion? Because there was a misunderstanding. There were three people in this conversation. The doctor, the interpreter, which is the translator, Tolk, interpreter, Tolk in, in Norwegian, and Barbarita. Who was responsible? Please type in chat. There's no right or wrong. This is your opinion. So please type it. That's funny because in my opinion, not that it matters because there's no right or wrong. This is a an opinion thing. The interpreter was responsible for it. Why is this my opinion? This is my opinion, and I'll tell you why. The interpreter should know much better than that. If you're an interpreter, you have to be prepared for a situation. You have to be prepared for situations where you have to know what's going on. Otherwise, you can cause a lot of trouble. So this is my take on it. As somebody who has worked as an interpreter, I'll tell you, it's a lot of responsibility. 
being an interpreter requires a lot of responsibility. Now please refer to the code for Quizlet Live and let's get started. As soon as you see the code, you can get started. What you will be seeing in the chat box right now is a link for those of you who want to do the presentation today. Yesterday you had some time to work on the presentation. I was there and I was really impressed with what I saw. Some of you are doing presentations that are very factual to give people information. Some of you are being creative and you're doing entertaining pieces, which I also thought was very interesting. And some of you are taking it to a more personal take, which I also liked when I, I walked around and I discuss what you were doing and some of you were talking about your your lives and things about your lives that we may not have known so it will be really interesting like I said I already have three people who have agreed to do the presentation in front of the class which I think is amazing but I cannot force people to be public speakers Public speaking is not for everybody. Some people just do it naturally and they feel comfortable in front of the camera. They feel comfortable in front of people, but some people freeze up, start sweating. They get nervous. They stutter. So I cannot force everybody to do the same thing. So here's what's going to happen. Some of you will do the presentation on Skype with me. Some of you will do the presentation in front of the class. Some of you will do the presentation in a group classroom, those small classrooms that we have at school, with me and your small group, because some of you are doing the presentations in groups. And everything will work out perfectly fine, perfectly well. Here we go. These are the pages of the day. You will not be assigned any extra work today. We have worked, we read the text and we did two of the activities but this was about it for the book for today. Please go to the link for the video conference so that you have access to me privately where you can also talk 
the video conference is very important. I'm not being paid to advertise this book or anything. But hey, if they want to pay me, I'm, <laughs> I'm up for it. The video conference is very important because when, when you are in the video conference, you can all look me in the eyes and see me and hear me and you can talk to me so I can listen to your voices. Some of you read out loud more often than others, but I, I like to give a chance to everybody so everybody can read out loud, answer questions, do presentations. So there's no love lost in these video conferences because there is an opportunity for everybody. And thank goodness we have classes online, but we also have two days where we are in person, where we can talk, where we can have the classes as you would normally do. Because we are on yellow level and we have to go in and teach in person, but some think of the children in other parts of the world, they're still having their classes 100% online. So you're not going through this. We should always look to the positive or try. It's not always easy. Please refer to the link in the chat for the video conference. This is not goodbye, not a proper goodbye because I'm still going to be with you for this entire classroom time, an hour and a half of my time you get, whether I'm online or in person. See you guys later.